Le Havre is a game for one to five players. It's a little bit worker placement, a little bit engine building, or at least engine deploying. There's resource gathering. It's kind of a tycoon game? Last time we played this, I may have told Jay he could pay me with meat, and he may have cried from giggling too hard. I regret nothing. Each player has a boat hopping along the waterfront. Each turn, the boat moves to the next open space, spawning the goods shown on the supply tile there. You then either claim all the resources on an offer space or take a building action, moving your worker to an available building, which may be yours, another player's, or the town's, and taking that action, typically gathering or transforming resources or building new buildings. How many buildings could a building action build if a building action could build buildings? One or two. Worker tiles never reset, so you can block others from using a valuable building for multiple turns, but you can't use the same building on consecutive actions. Using another player's building may require an entry fee to be paid. Sometimes that fee is meat. Once a boat lands on the final available space, the round card is resolved. Everyone pays a set amount of food to represent their workers. Buildings may be constructed by the town, and on harvest cards, players with grain get another grain, and players with two cattle get another cattle. Kids, ask your parents. Players can purchase buildings, including town buildings, with cash for a free action. You can also use cash in lieu of food, but if you run out of cash, you have to take a loan. There's a bit of engine building involved in chaining raw resources to refined goods and serious value in cornering critical industries like coke production, so everyone else has to pay you to power their factories. Ultimately, you need enough boats, fuel to power them, and high value goods to ship to make the most stacks of cash in the final round. You can ship goods at any point, but no one really does. The shipping lines have to be built, they might then get blocked, and there's typically something more profitable you could be doing. After the last round, everyone gets a final action where the limits on placing workers are removed. That's when everyone ships, and somehow the leather and steel markets don't collapse due to the flood of supply. The winner is determined in pure capitalist fashion by calculating everyone's net worth in money, buildings, ships, and special effects. On the one hand, it's a really complex game. On the other, it has a really focused decision space, because you only get one main action per turn. It doesn't seem like that gives you a lot of options, but the action actually accelerates. Say that ten times fast. Way more steeply than you expect. And that's the secret to doing well, understanding how the shape of the game changes. Fuel is basically useless in the early game, food critical. In later rounds, food is an afterthought, especially if you remember that ships provide you with a baseline amount each round. Now, I always forget to build ships, and that's one reason that this is actually a game I have never won against Jay, and every time we play, I find myself asking, why do I enjoy this so much when I never win? Le Havre is simply that much fun. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and support us on Patreon. So you may have noticed I've been a bit absent from the channel and there's been a few hiccups in our normal scheduled programming. Uh, any complaints may be forwarded to our new customer services manager. She may take a couple of years to get back to you.